Are you ready? Yeah. Go for it. Okay, I want to thank you and Cindy for uh, setting this up to get this interview with me. I hate to leave this world without a lot of the things that I did in the 42 years in the Navy going uh, unnoticed. So can you hear me? I can hear you. Keep going. Okay. Okay, I'm going to start with my name is Jack Smoot. S-M-O-O-T, born and raised in Yorktown, May 28th, 1929. I'm 92 years old. At the age of six, 18, I joined the Navy in 1946. I was a total Naval service of 42 years. I, I had five brothers, especially my oldest brother, Earl, who was a chief mineman in the Navy, convincing me to go the same way. My career directions started in boot camp. And after boot camp, I went to the USS Krishna, stationed in Little Creek, Virginia. And then electricians made school in Great Lakes. I uh, was discharged and joined the Ready to Reserve and became a mineman. Employed by the Naval Mine Depot in 1949 as a planner and estimator for mines warfare. And also I work at MST, Mine Service Test at Yorktown. My civilian job and my role in the Ready Reserves worked hand in hand, which I will share when I talk about the memories. After training, I became an instructor in mine warfare at the Naval Reserve Center in Newport News, Virginia. For over four decades, my career in the Ready Reserve focused on training and missions related to mine warfare. I retired in 1985. Memories. Nomag as instructor at the Naval Reserve Center in Newport News. I was the one who established the Nomag program and added by Admiral Dare stationed in Charleston. I am most proud of my part in the Nomag program and over 27 reserve units were established. Naval weapons position and ready reserves working hand in hand. My position at the Naval Weapon Station kept me involved in going on mine warfare training and inspections that were very helpful in my training with my own unit. The USS Shea, the USS Fraser, destroyers out of Charleston would come to mine training exercises at Yorktown, and I would supply them with mines for their training operations. I had a mine shop 31B. I had active duty personnel who tested mine contract materials at NWS. I had a mine shop made cutaway mines for training purposes. The Weapon Station Mine Warfare Department and CO Captain Young worked to provide and share space and experiences with the MOMAG units. Training and instructions. Sailing, sailors prepared to deploy were sent from Norfolk to train with my unit, and we trained them with active duty weapons department assigned overseas. Next, I want to talk a little bit about a recall bill that I had for my unit. I received a message on Wednesday that my unit had been mobilized and to report to the Reserve Training Center at 0700 Saturday morning. I had all of my people there 100%. 
one of our unit boys was in a scallop boat out at sea. They brought him in. We had him there also. They had a reserve unit that took us and gave us that administrative work that had to be done, powers of attorneys, a, a very small amount of medical checkup. They bussed us from the reserve center to Patrick Henry Airport for our Navy plane picked us up and flew us to Charleston. I didn't know where we were going until I got on the plane with my unit. Also, home port in, in New Orleans Reserve Unit, they sent me a com Navy commander, a chief journalist, and a first class photographer to follow the unit during this drill. We ended up going into Charleston and MOMAG unit in Charleston assigned us to a, a secret gated mine shop and gave us an LOI, letter of instructions. I took my personnel in the conference room to uh, activate the LOI. The three men that I mentioned that came from here, from New Orleans, they didn't have a clearance, so I didn't let them in. They didn't like that. <laughs> but anyway, it went over okay. Our instruction was to assemble two Mark 25 mines and two Mark 36 mines and put them on trailers outside the mine shop and have them ready to go after we did that. So this was on Saturday afternoon, and we worked kind of late getting all the mines tested out. But we had the mines and all the flight gear on board, and we had them on trailers by 2 o'clock, 1400, Sunday afternoon, ready to go to a hot spot over to Charleston Air Force Base. But I was told not to move the mines, but I'll stay there. And a team from MOMAG came in and inspected the mines and found no, no defects and said all of the mines were ready to be issued. So that went over well. Another subject of active duty assignments I've had in various locations, Charleston, Japan, Sigonella, England, Scotland, California, they assigned me as a quality assurance officer to the mine readiness inspection traveling out of Charleston, which was very interesting and rewarding. I went to a lot of active duty mine sites and served as a QA officer. Next, I want to mention Army control mines. You don't hear too much about those. I went to mine warfare school and a first class named Owens was teaching the Army control mines. And I spent a week with him. And uh, we, uh, I traveled, we had a casemate underground in Fort Monroe. And we had a casemate at Fort cable sound control mines. And the Army finally turned over their mines to the Navy. We had some very good sonar people. I think I heard stories about capturing a couple of German submarines during that time. I don't have any facts about it, but I heard about it. Also, I had a Japanese mine called an anti-invasion beach mine that they planted on the beaches and when the bow doors of the small boats coming in would dropped them outdoors, they'd hit those mines and blew them up. So I trained my personnel with, with the mines down at Virginia Beach. We set up a range and found out the countermine radius between the mines, one from blowing up and blowing another one up. That worked out pretty well. Then I had a special requirement to work on a Mark 27 mobile mine. Boris Fisher, who was one of my instructors, 
the best I ever had. He and I went to mine school in Charleston on the Mark 27. I was a chief torpedo man named Tipley, and a Haddock was a third class mine mine lab assistant. But we learned all about the Mark 27 mobile mines. And next, DSTs, what a chore that was. We had many, many kits to take and make destructors. As you know, DSTs, there was one type that they call a DST-115. That's a little small mobile mine that helicopters could plant in Vietnam in shallow water. But the other kits were for low drag bombs, 200, 500, 1,000 pound bombs that the planes were dropping and a destructor and a firing mechanism in it. You could plant it in the water or you could plant it on, on the land, either one. But they were very active during Vietnam. Now I've got to tell you about a very secret mission that I was got a message to serve on. And they put me on active duty for 180 days. I ended up in Clark Air Force Base in the Philippines and given instructions that there was North Korea had a, a pier out in the water with tracks on it. And they were dumping floating mines off of the, the pier. And I had a four man team assigned. I had a corpsman, a SEAL team member, and a instructor signed with me. And we swam out of a submarine. After the submarine ran aground, we had to swim five miles to get to the pier. And uh, fortunately, SEAL team had captured one of the North Korean mines, and it was at Clark Air Force Base, which I took apart and put back together so I would understand exactly what we were getting into. So we ended up getting there at 2 o'clock in the morning and pulling two of their mines under the pier and wrapping them with Promacord, explosive Promacord, and putting a timer on them for one hour. And we started swimming out of there. And we had almost got back to the submarine. Second base was the name of it. And when the, when the mine, when, when they went off, a shock wave did shake the submarine a little bit, but that, because we knew we had done what we went to do. Later on, after I'd gotten back home, I guess it was about a year later that on a Saturday morning, I get a phone call from some comptroller in Merlin saying that I was qualified for CRSC, Combat Related Service Connected, for my motion or military duty secret mission. And also I was qualified because of instructors time that I put out giving sailors on ships coming out of Norfolk. So he told me he was going to send me a check for $127,000 to cover back pay. And from now on, every month I'd get $1,700 a month the rest of my life. So that was a shocking thing, but I said I'll take it. But anyway, Medal awards, many, I've got many plaques and awards over the years, but one mostly proud of is a World War II victory medal that was awarded to me by President Truman. Person with most impact to me during all of this was Foxy Fisher. In advice to new mine, mine warfare, was very important to the Navy during my career. And I was interested in every aspect, thought out all the training I could get, continue to learn. 
working alongside other mindmen with the same interest and passion was a very rewarding experience. I'll tell you that if I'm part of the Navy that really interests you, keep training in that area and find others to walk alongside you. These relationships and share experience with the teams a whole lot from both sides. These relationships and shared experience will mean the most to you in your career, being a part of something that helps others to help you become a better sailor. I want to thank two master chiefs that were in my unit, Master Chief Atkins and Master Chief Epperly, that served with me for many years in my unit here at Yorktown. And uh, there's a lot more that I could say of things that went on, but uh, time is up here a little bit. So now I appreciate your help here and said for granting uh, me permission to, to say what I've said so far. Okay. And thank you and God bless you. Military people in my mind shop there at the base. And I wanted to read their names to you. Go for it. Okay. Lieutenant Bob Trask, T R A S T. He died, by the way. The next one was Lieutenant Ben, Bob Ben Attendee. We lost him also. He's gone. Then I had CWO4 Steve Sharshan. I don't know what ever happened to him, but he was stationed at QA Yorktown. And CWO4 John Lunham was in QA Yorktown. Then I had MNC Spangler, Chief Mineman. First class, MN1, stands it. First class, MN1, Stansel. Kaufman, MN1. I had an A01 Warner, aviation artist type. Then I had MNC Tally. And then I had MN1. Uh, how do you pronounce that? Dijakama. Oh, Dijakama. First class name Dijakama. I want I want to show you something. I got in my hand. You see it? Yeah. You know what it is? Mark six. Adam boy, he passed the test. <laughs> okay. Well, that's, I'm sorry, I missed giving these names to you when you were talking before. But uh, no problem, I'll add them in there. Okay, I appreciate it, Don. Okay. Thank you very much.